And so that's you right there. That's me. Yeah, that's uh, in London last last year. Um, we did a uh, trip over to London and Madrid, uh, which was a, a bit of fun, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but we took the hardware with us and we demonstrated at various experiential studios to, uh, to crowds of people. Uh, and, and literally, we got a crowd around the device each time and, and people wouldn't just walk up and look at it for a few minutes. They'd be there kind of transfixed. By oh, yeah. For, it's mesmerizing. For, for, yeah. for an hour or more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this this video, we... We, we use this video on our website because uh, whilst we were here, we had a, a lunch break and we decided to do some filming. That's Matt in the background there uh, because the lighting conditions and having, you know, having nice background and animated people is really good because when you're, when you've got hardware in your office all the time, it's, it's difficult to, to, uh, to make nice looking videos that don't feel contrived when you make them in a studio. So this was, these are real people and real reactions. You can see the kind of, surprise and joy in the face that, that woman there she played the a game on it for about an hour and a half we had to physically kick her <laughs> off because we were, we were we were leaving and uh but uh you can you can see the background someone using vr though uh there we could talk about that in a while but uh it was it was kind of a lot of it was talking about the ecosystem of 3d and how we're not here to replace uh you know other means of communication necessarily it's just another uh palette with which to paint kind of 3D data in a in a different way that's got different sort of uh, user interface and different uh, user experience. But this this was now in Madrid. We actually went to Madrid and appeared on this uh, live TV show, which was absolutely nuts, called El Omaguero, the the Ant Hill. And we had to, we had two of our uh, VX ones, one which was a game machine, and we had them on casters, and we had to have them backstage. And uh, right on cue, we had to a team of twenty cameramen wheel them onto stage uh where wow. i was interviewed in spanish but couldn't hear the uh <laughs> i couldn't hear the uh i couldn't hear the uh, translation so i was being interviewed on spanish tv with a, a live audience of about 200 people uh, some film stars in spanish film stars but i didn't have a clue who they were uh, it was all utterly crazy but fun very cool very cool so i'm yeah. playing here yeah. the uh the boxatron so boxatron a... yeah Boxatron is a is a really cool it's a really cool game and it's a cool little story as well. So what you're seeing there on the screen is actually the Boxatron game designer running on the PC and that's me doing a level editor. Uh, I think I speeded this up by times ten, but it was to show you could make a level in Boxatron in in, in maybe five minutes or so. Uh, mm -hmm. You can make a basic level. In fact, my nine year old daughter has made her own levels in Boxatron. It's a what you see is what you get destructible sandbox editor game designer it's kind of like if you can play minecraft you can play voxatron but the interesting part of the story is the, the voxatron engine and game was written by this guy called joseph white who's a, a new zealander who lives in tokyo he's married to a, a japanese lady uh and back in uh, probably 2010 11 he wrote this game called voxatron for a volumetric display that's how he envisaged it being played but uh, there, there wasn't oh, wow. a volumetric display to play it on. So he had to then write a simulator to play it on a PC. And so when we eventually took him a prototype of our hardware, he decided to port the game across and now it natively runs on our hardware. So you can code up games and play them in volumetric uh, very quickly. This video here is uh, Microsoft's new um, codec. It's really cool. Uh, it came out of the Capture Studios in Los Angeles. It's a really effective, really efficient codec, full volumetric codec encoded in an MP4 file. All the 3D data is in a, is in a regular video file that you can play on the screen and see the data all move around. It's like a wow. texture map, a UV texture map. It's really clever. It's about a tenth of the size of any other 3D format that I've played with. It's volumetric uh, and it has audio. And it's just a really, that little clip is really good because the woman talks about uh, the uh, the value proposition of volumetric data, and that's all about bringing people together in a in a sort of in a uh, you know without the without the the barrier to experience to, that that comes with with other modes of three D uh, display like VR and AR. 